Good evening, good evening, friends. Today, today, I just realized as I was looking back at some of these videos to get myself back on track that um, I'm wearing this red hoodie in a lot of them. But this is like my sin at home chilling hoodie that really, I guess, is just really dirty. So, <laughs> but it does say Jesus on there. If you, Jesus, it says Jesus, my lifeguard walks on water. I got this hoodie when I was down in Florida, and uh, yeah, I've been wearing it a lot around the house, and just really anytime I need to throw something on, I just throw this on. So, done justifying my uh, always wearing the same sweatshirt every time. I do have another red sweatshirt too, which is a cardinal sweatshirt, so, but definitely only two red sweatshirts, so no excuses. <laughs> So I was thinking about, you know, I could go on and on about these demonic possession, but I don't think it's very edifying. I do want to mention one more thing, um, just out of Acts 16. And, you know, the whole point of this was uh, I went and saw that movie come out in Jesus' name. And I just wanted us to have a balanced view of demonic uh, oppression and possession and just to understand you know what I mean? Like, not every single thing that we encounter is an evil spirit. Uh, we are very capable of being evil all on our own without demonic influence. Um, but, ooh, that being said, I might have to go back to Genesis chapter 3. I'll do that tomorrow. But right now, I will, I will say this, that uh, we are capable of doing evil on our own. Evil spirits do help us do evil as well um, without possessing us. And there are times when we are actually possessed that we need to be unpossessed and set free. And, um, and it is usually very clear. Now, this woman uh, in Acts, to me, was an, an example of a woman who was possessed, but not acting like super crazy, like... The person I was talking about yesterday. So I wanted to balance things out and talk about her. Acts 16, 16, it says, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by fortune-telling. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God which show unto us the way of salvation. And this she did many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. So it's important that we see this, this woman because she was possessed by the spirit of divination. And these, these spirits do have apparently different names and different functions like the last spirit we talked about was a dumb and a deaf spirit and um, the child was deaf and dumb but also uh, very violent and crazy um, but this woman has a spirit of divination which allows her to uh, fortune tell and foresee the future so you know when people are going to these fortune tellers and they're telling them stuff that like actually happens like that's true. You know what I mean? We can't, we can't sit here and pretend that they, there's no power on the side of the enemy. You know what I mean? The, the enemy does have some power, but it's not the final power and authority. And, um, and sometimes those spirits are able to foretell things and then their partners actually make it happen. You know what I mean? But anyway, so this, uh, this spirit, uh, that possessed her though it, it doesn't seem like um she's out of control you know what i mean like to me what i was saying yesterday was like if someone is possessed by a spirit it will be clear because they will have zero control over the body they'll be foaming at the mouth and all those things that kid was doing but then we have this woman which was possessed and not very clear that she was foaming at the mouth and doing these crazy things but she clearly was um, possessed, but just able to uh, divine, use divination and foretell and do fortune telling and bring her masters a lot of money. 
So it says her masters were gaining a lot of money because of what she said. But at the end of the day, um, kind of similar to whenever the spirits came across Jesus, they, um, this spirit that was in her was telling people. It's interesting how the spirit was, was the same followed Paul and us crying, these men are servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. And she did that many days. It's interesting to me how that um, she would do this, right? And and I wonder, was this like a, a moment of like her and her like right mind? Like she saw this through that spirit that what Paul and them were and she was like, telling people that because she was excited about it or was it because um, this spirit just couldn't help but uh, talk about it and it's interesting that they would um, that they would tell people about the truth if they were trying to deceive people you know what I mean like if this spirit was set on deception why would he be telling people the truth about how Paul and them were the servants of the Most High God and showing people the way into salvation. So, some interesting things to think about. Um, and I don't, I don't think that we can have all the answers, but but fun to think about. But at the end of the day, um, maybe it wouldn't be apparent that someone's possessed by a spirit. But this woman, obviously, it was apparent because of her gift. So, but will we always get to know somebody? that we just randomly see, um, if they're acting normal, how would we know that they're, um, whatever those people are called, the soothsayer, or, um, I don't even know what they're called, the fortune teller. We can, how are we going to know somebody's a fortune teller? Unless we go see them, and they try to fortune tell for us, and hopefully, uh, none of us are doing that. So, uh, don't go to a fortune teller, ever. That's, it's not good, it's, it's a sin, in my opinion. Um, but anyways, all right, well, I will, um, uh, see you guys tomorrow. So just wanted to talk about demonic possession, but here's what's important about all this. At the end of the day, Paul turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. So no matter what, whatever's going on spiritually, whatever the, you know, Whatever's going on, whether it's completely obvious that there's a spirit, whether it's not completely obvious, whether the spirit's manifesting, not manifesting, if you command that spirit to come out in the name of Jesus, it's coming out as long as he knows you and you know him. Because we remember the other story where the people were saying to come out in Jesus' name and the spirits are like, we don't know you and you don't really know Jesus. So don't be acting like you do and you can tell us what to do. But if you tell a spirit, come out in Jesus name. It'll come out. Amen.